Om Shri Sai Ram. Pranams to Shri Sati Sai Baba. Thank you all for being here today. Um, today we are going to cover the topic of depression. Depression is a common illness that can affect people of all ages and has an impact on the quality of everyday life. According to the World Health Organization, more than 264 million people are affected with depression. Today we'll be exploring and talking about ways to manage this effectively. We have senior psychiatrists and assistant psychologists with us to share their experiences. We have Dr. Judah Gargi. Dr. Gargi is a retired senior consultant who has worked in the NHS in many senior positions, including that of a medical director. He's an active Rotarian and has attended many Sai international medical camps including that in Nepal, Russia and Sierra Leone. Dr. Gurgi is currently the service coordinator at the Sri Satya Sai Centre of Chel Chelmsford and is engaged in a range of service activities, both locally and internationally, especially in Nepal and Sierra Leone. We have Serena Jones, she's a psychologist. Serena graduated from Cardiff University in 2016 with a first class honours degree in education and psychology. She's currently an assistant psychologist working with child and adolescent mental health services, CALMS, within the NHS. Serena will be commencing her clinical psychology doctoral training in September with Royal Holloway University and the NHS to become a qualified clinical psychologist. Serena has five years of experience working with children and adults with mental health difficulties, physical health difficulties, learning difficulties and behaviours with challenges. Serena is passionate about removing social barriers to improve access to psychological help for all. She has a particular interest in raising awareness of mental health in cultures and communities where there is a negative stigma attached. In her spare time, Serena enjoys reading, singing and playing the piano. Jai Sai Ram. Sai Ram everybody. My humble pranam to the lotus feet of our beloved Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba. Brothers and sisters and children, thank you very much for inviting me to do this monthly webinar talk on depression. Now, depression is a very common condition worldwide in every society and in most countries. Now, there are many mental health problems, which includes the following. And out of 300 mental health disorders, depression is one of the commonest one. All the different mental health problems are grouped into symptoms for people to get an understanding of the condition because there isn't a clear cut idea because it is based on symptoms. So we are going to talk about depression today. And uh, I will touch only on a few other areas which is related to the depression. First of all, we need to define what is depression. Now, mild depression is a normal condition. You and I feel it, you know. It is a sadness brought on by life's circumstances and disappointments at times. But the clinical depression, on the other hand, is a sadness so deep that it starts affecting different quarters of one's life. Uh, and or sometimes leading even to a very serious condition, suicide, if it is not treated. So I'll attempt to uh, define what is depression. This is a more of a classical dictionary uh, definition that you can get. 
I'll come to the more uh, clinical uh, depression definition after this. I'll define it, a serious mood disorder involving one or more episodes of intense psychological depression or loss of interest or pleasure that lasts two or more weeks and is accompanied by irritability, fatigue, poor concentration, sleep disturbances, weight gain or loss, feeling of worthlessness or guilt, and sometimes suicidal tendencies. Now, uh, worldwide, uh, there may not be a diff uh, definition of depression in certain uh, society or in certain countries. So the world has devised a certain classification, the international classification of diseases, which is called ICD, or the American-based Diagnostic Statistical Manual. This is just a, a cluster of symptoms, and you need to have at least five of these, including fatigue and depressed mood to qualify for the for the diagnosis of depression. And I'm not going to read through that. I've already uh, 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 spelled out the different uh, conditions that one encounters in depression, like depressed mood, deepness interest, and all that sort of thing. Now, this is uh, how depression is different from sadness. As I had said, the, when the depression goes beyond that of disappointment, you can see this lady who is in a tranquil uh, environment with some rays of sunshine coming, trees, and very, very quiet sort of thing. I think she was trying to have a quiet moment, trying to read a book, but she's not able to concentrate, I think. So out here, the diagnosis is more or less uh, confirmed. I, I don't know her at all. I just picked this image for just to illustrate this. Now, why does depression happen? Uh, uh, first of all, let me make it clear that depression is not a sign of weakness. It can happen to most determined celebrities at any age. It can occur at many, from children, I'll go later on, to the old age. It is sometimes due to clear reason, like disappointment, frustration, loss of something or someone. There is often more than one reason and is different for different uh, people. It may come gradually, it may come out of the blue. Now, volumes and volumes of chapters have been written about the cause of depression, the etiology. So I'm just put this together. I'm not going to go in, in any details, but I will allude to them as I uh, go along. We can uh, group them into biological, genetic, psychological, social, environmental, trauma, natural or man-made, or a combination of all of the ever. Now, these are some famous people. I'm sure you, I don't, Abraham Lincoln, President of United States, Churchill, our uh, Prime Minister, Princess Diana, and the Harry Potter author. They all had documented history of depression. I'm not going to go into detail, but if you Google search, there are, there are many, many essays on all aspects of different forms of depression, but most of them overcome their depression and use it for the cause. Uh, Abraham Lincoln was a very good uh, orator. He delved into poetry and Lady Diana involved herself in all charity, uh, writing and all that sort of thing. Now cause of depression, I'm just going to touch on because uh, as I go along, I'll make that a few illustrate some of them. Relationship breakdown, losing job, living alone are some of the life events and a bereavement. And even after a long time of bereavement, one may uh, present features of depression. And as I've uh, alluded, trauma, both natural and man-made. Physical health, uh, uh, the depression may uh, be present as a part of uh, any uh, major physical illness, you know, somebody who's suffering from cancer, heart disease, arthritis, viral fevers, glandular fever, underactive 
thyroid, and many, many other conditions. I'll just give you an example of the thyroid function test. While I was working, I used to see a lot of uh, young adults and males and females with uh, Down syndrome. And they often presented with severe uh, depressive symptoms. And before uh, starting any treatment or uh, starting them on antidepressant, we generally do the normal uh, blood test and things like that. And in the majority of the cases, the thyroxine was deficient. And a course of thyroxine uh, replacement therapy, and they are better. Even uh, in few people who had to be admitted were treated with thyroxine, and that is, uh, uh, and, and they improve. Now, we, the psychiatrists especially have to take a long, long history and childhood trauma, difficult experiences, many forms of physical, sexual abuse, psychological abuse, witnessing violence and traumatic events, or even having an unstable family background can bring about depressive symptoms in different format and forms. Alcohol, drug abuse, cannabis, they are all used at times to alleviate depressive symptoms, but believe me, they are depressions and they cause untold damage. And this is something totally to be avoided. Now, genetic factors which runs in families, mothers especially, and we always need to ask somebody presenting with depression, anybody in your family suffering from uh, depression, especially mother's side, grandmother's side, you know, and also the cause of depression, the imbalance of chemicals called neurotransmitter in the brain, both uh, called 5-hydroxy and noradrenaline. I'm not going to go into any detail of that. Now, I'm going to, I alluded to natural causes. In 2015, um, if I remember correctly, 25th of April, of severe earthquake, 7.8 Richter scale went, and 9,000 people who are, uh, died in Kathmandu and other adjoining districts, killing a lot of people, 100,000 people uh, affected by it, 800,000 houses down, a lot of them not uh, rebuilt uh, to this date. Now, the reason I'm showing this is, this is a Vincent Tower built in 1835, somewhere around that. It is 203 uh, feet up. And on that fateful morning, there were about 25 to 30 people on top of the tower. If you can see the uh, somewhere at the top, there are people enjoying the view. It broke into three pieces. And as you see on the right-hand side, a lot of, lot of, there are 50 people who died and uh, quite a lot of them were injured. Just a lighter side of this, there was a young couple who had gone uh, to view uh, Kathmandu from the top, and they were from two different ethnic minorities, so their love affair was a bit sacred. And luckily, they escaped because they cushioned with each other's uh, uh, embrace, and they it did not fall on the, the side of the impact. And they were admitted together, and then it was found that they were in love, and and their elders blessed uh, blessed their relationship. Now, this is the tower rebuilt, just uh, 236 uh, uh, feet high uh, with lifts and everything, all the amenities. And, and I think with all the post-traumatic stress syndromes and all that sort of thing, observing the tower fall was a lot of trauma. And this has really, really people. My own experience is that uh, uh, during the first uh, episode when the first uh, earthquake went, I was there with a team of 25 doctors to give the relief. I, on my, uh, I went there mainly to help uh, how to deal with the mental side of things. And I was giving an interview uh, and it was on the 15th of May, I think, when the second uh, 7.2 Richter scale went and I was, uh, I, realize what it is to be, to be in an earthquake because the whole building was trembling and I thought I was gone, you know. I had to scramble out, lights were off, everything, and then luckily nothing happened to me. I got out all right. So that is the tale of my encounter with the real earthquake. Now, what are the signs of depression? 
in the mind, a lot of the symptoms that I've already talked about, feeling unhappy, miserable, down the dumps, depressed feeling, they won't go away, can't enjoy anything, losing interest in seeing family, friends, problem in concentrating, not able to do things that you enjoy, pessimistic view, feeling hopeless, and even suicidal thought, wish I was dead, I'm no good, all that sort of feeling. Anxiety is a very, very uh, prominent symptoms. It occurs in 50% of the depressed uh, people and uh, other people uh, and uh, vice versa also. You'll see anxiety in depression and in depression you can see anxiety. In the body, what happens? You can't go to sleep, early morning waking, loss of interest in sex, general loss of libido, weight loss or weight gain, comfort eating, putting on weight. Other people may observe that you are uh, you are making mistakes at work, just not being able to focus, neglecting routine chores like cooking, cleaning, neglecting yourself in the way you look, and quite withdrawn and irritable sometimes. And you worry about things more than usual, presenting big uh, physical problems. Now, I talked about pandemics. Uh, when I was in Sierra Leone, this lady was brought to me on the left-hand side, 75-year-old lady. Some of you might have seen this picture, which I've displayed in a few of my talks before. She lost all her six uh, daughters and about 12 grandchildren. And she was depressed for a very, very long period of time. She had never seen a psychiatrist because there are no psychiatrists in Sierra Leone, no health professional. So I was the first one to see her with my just simple counseling. And we'll talk a lot about counseling in the second half of the paper. Look at the lady on the right hand side, you know, after just four or five days, she came to see me with a bag of mangoes. She even invited me to her house to have a meal, you know. So that is a st uh, good story about what can happen to real, she was not treated with antidepressants, but just counseling. And then say that, why don't you do volunteer works? We have come so far away to help your countrymen. And she in fact took interest and she is still doing very well looking after her grandchildren I hear. Now presentation of depression can be different at different ages, but the symptoms are more or less the same. All the what I've told you. In childhood, elderly, pregnancy, childbirth, in mental illness, depression is very, very common. And it is also seen in more in ethnic minority, Afro-Caribbean, uh, alcohol substance, we've already touched that. Um, we have touched on the major uh, disasters, pandemic, uh, traumas, and current COVID-19 due to the lockdown, uh, anxiety of uh, and uh, depression, fear, all that sort of thing. There will be a little bit of more talk uh, in the second half of the presentation about the statistics of the uh, current COVID uh, crisis. Now, I'm not going to go into any details. In childhood, they may not uh, able to express their feelings. And uh, often they present as school refusing, sometimes even vague abdominal problems. I've seen two young children who had to have a laparotomy because the, the somatic symptoms were so intense, you know. And they often have to be referred to the uh, um, camps uh, services, the, the child and adolescent mental health services. Likewise, the elderly, may uh, present with a lot of physical symptoms and long-term illness may be very similar. They are on a lot of medication, different medical conditions, and they would need more help and referral to the memory clinic. They may present as uh, dementia, but in fact, they um, present with uh, underlining uh, depressive symptoms. Likewise, uh, with pregnancy, childbirth, if there is a history of bipolar disorder, past history, family history, uh, and mental illnesses, I've already alluded to that. And uh, we have touched on most of them, so I'm not going to go any further. Now, coming to the good part is the treatment of depression. Mild depression don't need much treatment. They can get better without any treatment. I think it's just a reassurance that, uh, look, you might be depressed because you lost your job or you, the relationship broken and this, that sort of, sort of just simple chit chat talk, friendly talk. And as I volunteers, you do come across a large number of people 
who may need help. And then I think by just listening to them uh, and talking to them, you might be uh, uh, helping them. With severe depression, moderate depression, they may need medication. I'll touch on that very briefly because all that is, uh, you'll have to go to the first port of call is the GP, sitting with the GP, uh, if it is diagnosis of depression which needs to be treated, then I arrange the medica medication which uh, options and that. Now, the point three, four, five, which I put in red, I hope it is visible. The lifestyle changes, exercises, healthy living, eating, meditation, relaxation, self-help, take uh, talking therapies will be dealt by my colleague Sharina in the second half. So, as I said, the moderate to severe depression may need antidepressant or a combination of medication, depending on what the condition is like. If they present with a bit of psychosis, which is called manic depressive psychosis, they may need a little bit of uh, antipsychotic medication. If they are not able to sleep, then you might have to give them a little bit of sedative type of antidepressants. Uh, so sometimes they present with severe psychomotor retardation. By that I mean, they are in a vegetative state. They are not able to do anything, not eat, not sleep, almost moribund with suicidal thoughts. And these people often respond to ECT. I've seen miraculous improvement in people who present with that sort of picture. Now, the most important as Sai devotees and other uh, uh, people who are uh, in the spiritual path, I'll touch a little bit on the, on the spiritual. And the, to, to sum up, having faith and total surrender to God is something that uh, really, really helps. All these uh, things will help, but sometimes medication don't help. CVTs, counseling, uh, limited use. And there's a mindful medic meditation, which I think our colleague will uh, allude to. This has, I'll all say that is that a Harvard Medical School MRI study showed that uh, there is documented evidence on the brain studies that uh, mindful uh, uh, meditation, uh, it will make one aware of the surrounding and in the world, what is going on? And you have got an introspection of one's own body. And that is something that, uh, uh, that really is helpful. And this is helpful in anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and other uh, physical condition like irritable bowel syndrome, psoriasis, fibromyalgia, et cetera. The mindful uh, meditation can be traced back to Lord Buddha, 535, 36 years ago, when uh, Buddha was uh, shielded from witnessing all forms of suffering. And when he first came in contact with somebody uh, who uh, was uh, 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 suffered from uh, real illness, dying, then he said, what is the meaning of this suffering? And then he wandered around trying to find a solution. And then the finding, his finding was that true happiness emanates from the peaceful mind. And I think this was the birth of practice of mindful meditation. Now, uh, if we'll go back into the uh, one by days, the, this is the Chitta Prasadhanam, which I will read. It is from Yoga Sutra, you know, and uh, this is as good uh, at the present moment. I'll read this to you. And by cultivating attitude of friendliness towards the happy, compassion for the unhappy, delight in the virtuous and disregard towards the wicked, the mind stuff retains its undisturbed calmness. So there are four key words here, friendliness, compassion, joy, and equanimity. Right, and the Bhagavad Gita again, the key to happiness is reduction of desires. Happiness can only be found within oneself. That is the message. 
And we all know about Arjuna's plight, the despondency, ultimate surrender to Lord Krishna and blessing from him and, and then rising to the war. And all the Bhagavad Gita we are, uh, uh, we are blessed to have actually won the war. Now, our own Swami, what does he say? He, he talks about happiness. Happiness is union with God and get to divinity. Knowing God is the origin of all happiness. Emphasis on sattvic happiness is superior to tamasic or rajas, rajasic happiness, which is external, temporary, and artificial. And Swami also says that you cannot be happy alone when others are not happy. So that is why we say all samastaloka sukhino bhavanti is a part of our uh, offering. And whenever uh, we meet, that is what is said uh, in every uh, meeting. You cannot be happy alone. So that is one thing. And be grateful doing ups, patience doing downs, and not cursing your destiny. And Baba's most important teaching is seal your desires and attachment. Free the thoughts of I and mind and ego. By practice, you, I, everybody can achieve this happiness and conquer depression spiritually. So this was my talk on the spirituality. But being a psychiatrist and a medical profession, I have to tell you a little bit of the, the antidepression and the medication, which uh, won't complete the talk, you know. So this all depends. Uh, in the old days, there were uh, very uh, uh, drugs which made you sedated, a lot of side effects and things like that. Nowadays, there are modern ones called the SSRIs, which uh, uh, prevents the reuptake of the uh, serotonin and uh, 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 treats the depression. And it is um, the right type of uh, the anti antidepression. Is you can only or uh, consult your GP and he will uh, take you through and the, they'll offer you a range of medication as I alluded, whether it is uh, 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 need, need some sedation and all that sort of thing, okay? And then we need to uh, look into uh, other forms of treatment, which I have already alluded to. Now, again, these are points, tips for people with depression which my psychologist colleague will take you through, but uh, any health professional uh, or even you, uh, yourself as volunteers who come across a lot of people with uh, difficulties suffering from depression, you just talking to people and uh, ask them to talk to people whom they trust, facilitate them and go and see the GP. And with the right help, most cases get better. And connecting with people you care about, avoiding isolation, and reassuring that cycles of depression may be due to real illness and not your own fault. And you need to keep occupied, avoid using alcohol or drugs, and meditation and self-contemplation, and trying to find what is the cause of the, to the depression that is causing the problem. And sometimes, uh, even if you have started medication, they don't just work overnight. It takes three, four weeks and counseling or even CBT and things do take their time, you know. And tips for partners and families and carers. And I think we all, everybody, we, our duty is to listen to their problems, which can help to tackle the root of depression, encourage them rather than dealing it yourself. And advice like snap out of it is not going to be very helpful. I do think you just most of the time that understand that depression can happen to anybody, as I highlighted earlier. Just help to talk and listen and help them to take their mind off. And understanding, you should also understand that depressed people can be irritable, difficult at times, and a bit difficult to understand. So we need to be real patience with them. Take seriously anything about hurting themselves or suicide. Any, any hint that is they need to, uh, there are Samaritans uh, can be contacted. Uh, 
uh, 111, uh, all, all sort of uh, contacts are available, which is available in the second talk. Now, I have, I don't know how I'm doing for time, but this is my almost summary slide. And I want to summarize by saying that depression is very common and leading cause of disability worldwide. I have over my uh, past eight, 10 years been to various countries, many places in Russia, Nepal, India, Sierra Leone, and the presentation of depression is maybe slightly different to that lady in Sierra Leone, to many people I've seen in Russia and in different parts of Russia and things like that. People 18 to 44 years, it is a leading cause of disability and sometimes premature death also can happen due to suicide. All modalities of suicide in the States, gunshot are very common, I am told. And the prevalence is quite high in the UK, 4.5, in the rest of the world, 4.4. Uh, with treatment, depression still may linger on three to six months, sometimes even more, you know. And complications of depression include exacerbation of pain and disability with a range of physical diseases. And it may reduce the quantity and quality of the life, may leading to self-harm, even suicide. There's a high suicide rate in people with depression. And this topic is a topic of our sometimes uh, separate uh, uh, webinar, I think, because it's too big to even mention a few other points. And while we are treating, we should be aware of the risk of suicide and comorbid condition. While reviewing, we should always think of suicide, comorbid condition. Ah, have you ever felt like life is not worth living? Have you ever felt like it was so bad that you want to end it all? Sometimes you get this thought, you know, I have to ask you with this question. And they will, their face will lighten up and say, oh, doctor, yes, yes. I have felt like that, but I didn't actually want me to kill it. But these thoughts are really plaguing me. So as I've said, regular reviews for suicidal risk, safeguarding concerns, people may present at depressive uh, conditions, but the underlying problem may be a safeguarding issue. And sometimes the response to treatment may not be good. So, and we need to find out whether they are adhering to their treatment or not. And also sometimes if it is older type of antidepressants, they may suffer from adverse side effect and they may have stopped the treatment altogether, you know. So at the end, again, I want to get back, uh, being on the side pole, I think happiness opposite of depression, it is union with God, okay? And whilst everything doesn't work, but it is important at the last moment, when you are in a real critical position, you don't have any way to turn to. Why fear while I'm here? And taking refuge inside or totally surrendering like Arjuna did to Lord Krishna. In a dis he, uh, the description of uh, despondency which Arjuna displayed is a classical textbook picture of depression. You can uh, look at the symptoms that is displayed in the Bhagavad Gita and look at a textbook of uh, psychiatry on the chapter of depression, it is very, very similar and familiar, okay? Sairam, thank you very much. I think I've, uh, uh, I've not gone over time. Thank you very much. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to take. Thank you very much. My humble pranams at the divine lotus feet of our dear Bhagavan Sri Sakrasaya Prabhupada. Good evening, respected elders, brothers and sisters. Today I will be presenting about depression from a psychological perspective, covering the different types of depression, evidence-based therapies to support those with the diagnosis of depression, strategies to improve well-being for yourselves and also how to support others. So I wanted to start um, by thinking about how psychologists view depression. We view it not as a disease, but as a human experience. 
something that is complex but understandable, a set of psychological responses to the events and circumstances that we go through. And that depression serves a function. It often tells us things need to change in some way. So when we're depressed, we don't necessarily need treatment, but we might need some practical support and perhaps help from others to make changes in our lives. There are many different types of depression. I've grouped here the four main types. Recurrent depression involves repeated depressive episodes. During these episodes, as Dr. Kaki has spoken about, the person will experience depressed mood, a loss of interest in previously enjoyed activities, um, less energy leading to diminished activity and for a period of at least two weeks. Bipolar affective disorder is a type of presentation that consists of both manic and depressive episodes separated by periods of stable mood. When I talk about manic, I mean elevated levels of um, mood and overactivity and a decreased need for sleep. Postnatal depression is a type of depression that parents can have after having a baby. I say parents because fathers can have it too. And symptoms include constant sadness, a lack of energy and difficulty bonding with the child. And lastly, seasonal affective disorder, or otherwise known as SAD, is a type of depression that comes and goes in a seasonal pattern. It's sometimes known as well as winter depression because symptoms are more apparent and severe during the winter months. So now we know a little bit about the definition of depression according to psychology and different types. What is the impact? Um, again, I'm not going to spend too long on this because Dr. Kaki has covered this, but um, I think it's fourfold. First of all, it affects our thinking. So it might mean that we have difficulty making decisions, um, difficulty concentrating, um, feeling worthless, having suicidal thoughts, self-doubt, feeling inadequate, self-criticism, negative thoughts, and also rumination, so going over the same thoughts in our mind again and again. It also impacts on the way that we feel emotionally. So we may feel sad, hopeless, quite numb. Um, and as Dr. Kaki said, we also might feel quite irritated um, and even angry and at times guilty as well. Depression then also impacts on the way that we feel physically. So we might gain or lose weight, have an increased or decreased appetite, suffer from sleep disturbances, never quite feeling 100%, having aches and pains, this loss of energy, always feeling quite tired, restlessness, agitation, and even tearful. So this impact on our thinking and our emotions and our physical body will then obviously impact on the things that we do affecting our daily routine. So losing interest and enjoyment in activities that we might have previously enjoyed, difficulty doing everyday tasks such as self-care, withdrawal from friends and family or just life in general, and drinking and smoking more, which actually might be classed as a form of self-harm, frequent crying, and irritation and aggression again. So Dr. Kaki covered the DSM criteria, which is what we use to diagnose somebody um, with depression, but the DSM doesn't provide any guidelines on how to support the treatment of this. And that is where we turn to the NICE guidelines. Um, and there are separate ones for children and separate ones for adults. Today, I'm gonna to focus on adults. Um, so this document, provides information for identifying and managing depression in adults 18 and older in primary and secondary care. So if you have a diagnosis of mild depression, psychotherapy is advised um, as a first port of call, either in the form of cognitive behavioral therapy, so CBT at an individual or group level, or interpersonal psychotherapy. Um, and I will cover those in a bit more detail in a minute. And then if you have a diagnosis of moderate or severe depression, you're more likely to be advised um, to, to look into medication um, in the form of antidepressants, again, as Dr. Kaki has mentioned. And it might be that individuals receive a combination of these to support their well-being. Um, often medication might be um, something somebody started on to help them get to a level where they're able to engage in therapy, or it might be that they have 
a combined approach. For children, um, I know I haven't really covered it, but um, therapy might also involve the family. Um, so it might be a family-based CBT or family-based um, IPT as well. So interpersonal psychotherapy. This is basically based on the idea that symptoms of depression have multiple causes, usually associated with something going on in somebody's life, but more specifically due to their difficulties with relationships. So it works on the understanding that the quality of our relationships can either cause, maintain, or protect against depression. So the main aims are to reduce symptoms of depression and improve the quality of relationships. So particular techniques that might be used in IPT might be identification of emotions. So for some of us, accurately identifying how we're feeling can be hard, and a therapist will help you to identify emotions from an unbiased point of view. Expression of emotion involves helping you to express your emotions in a healthier, more positive way, and dealing with issues from the past. So sometimes the relationships that we've had in the past can impact on the way we interact in the present. And part of therapy might involve looking into the past to see if any patterns have formed. So moving on now to cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT. CBT is a type of psychotherapy which aims to modify our thought patterns in order to change our moods and behaviors. And that's because it considers our thoughts, emotions and behaviors to be linked and to have a bi-directional impact on each other, as you can see from the image. CBT believes that our negative actions or feelings are as a result of our current negative, distorted beliefs or thoughts. So the CBT approach to depression might involve challenging negative thoughts, increasing enjoyable activities for the person, which is known as behavioral activation, and building on or developing skills to maintain positive and healthy relationships. Um, CBT believes events themselves don't cause us to feel depressed, but it's rather our beliefs about the events that determine our emotional reaction. When we have these thoughts, um, it, might, it might feel that we have a tendency to think they are true, but actually when we feel low in mood, we're more likely to focus on negative things. And when somebody's experiencing depression, they tend to think in any or all of the following unhelpful thinking styles. So all or nothing thinking, thinking in black and white, um, having a tendency to judge people or events using general labels, Cat catastrophizing, so overestimating the chances of a disaster, jumping to conclusions, so making negative interpretations even though there aren't any definitive facts, having a negative focus, ignoring or misinterpreting positive aspects of a situation and focusing on your weaknesses, living by fixed rules, so having fixed rules and unrealistic expectations, often using words such as should, must, and can't, which leads to unnecessary guilt, and personalizing, taking responsibility and blame for everything that goes wrong. So again, CBT approach to this is called cognitive restructuring, but basically just the idea about reframing these thoughts. So if you think in an all or nothing way, thinking about what the evidence is for that, and what you might say to a friend if it was them experiencing those thoughts. If you have a tendency to catastrophize, thinking about putting things into perspective instead of blowing it out of proportion. If you jump to conclusion, thinking about whether you're being inflexible. Is that actually the case for every situation or is it perhaps just pertinent to the one that you're experiencing now? A negative focus, trying to acknowledge and appreciate the positives and accumulate these. And living by fixed rules, being kind to yourself if you are unable to achieve something the way you wanted it to be done. So we're all individuals and respond to situations in different ways and therefore not everything will work for everybody. And there are no set rules for managing our emotions. A more helpful way to think about this could be, is my current method working for me? And if the answer is yes, then that's great. But if not, these strategies might be an alternative way that is more helpful for you. So firstly, communicating. This is one that's often talk, spoken about by lots of people, but being open with people that you trust about how you're feeling, um, so often verbally, but if that's difficult, maybe perhaps writing your thoughts down in a diary, or there are lots of online platforms now um, to seek support. Exercising, again, another one that is often spoken about, and there's lots of research to support this, 
looking after our bodies, playing sports and eating healthily can have a positive impact on our mood. Calming, so trying things like meditation, breathing exercises or progressive muscle relaxation. Learning a new skill is a really good way to gain confidence. Connecting, so spending time with people that we care about. Contributing, helping others or contributing to causes that you believe in and are passionate about. Creating, so expressing yourself in a creative way, whether that's through music, art or drama and other things as well. And congratulating, being kind to yourself um, and commending yourself for doing things, even if they're small. And seeking support. Um, as Dr. Kaki said, there's no shame in needing support from others. So speaking to the GP, if you need a referral to a local mental health team, or even signing up to depression support group might be helpful. I also just wanted to touch upon sleep hygiene, as that's another recommendation in the NICE guidelines for managing depression for adults. Again, these might seem like really basic things, but they are um, true and really important. We know there's a close relationship between sleep and mental health. The sleep serves to repair and store our bodies and brains, and that's vital for our well-being. So things like establishing a regular sleep routine, avoiding excess eating, smoking, drinking, alcohol, and screen time before bed, trying to create a proper environment for sleep, and participating in regular physical exercise can also be helpful. So Swami says that every effort should be made to keep the human body healthy. Health is wealth. A person with poor health cannot enjoy wealth. Health is more important because it gives physical and mental strength to a person. So Swami notices the link between physical and mental health. Um, and now thinking about helping others. So if it's not that you are depressed yourself, but you may know somebody who is, what can you do? Again, something Dr. Kaki's mentioned, but listening is really, really important. Um, not labeling, but just hearing out the person and what they have to say. Accepting them as they are without judgment. Gently encouraging them to help themselves. For example, by staying physically active, eating a balanced diet and trying to do things they enjoy. And maybe obtaining information about psychological services and other support services available to them. Staying in touch with them, so whether that's messaging, um, phoning them or even meeting with them in person. We know that people who um, suffer from depression can be isolated and might find it difficult to leave the house. So thinking about that on an individual basis, what will work for that person. And again, something that Dr. Clark has mentioned, trying to be patient um, as, as this is something that is difficult for people and might take time um, to get them to do some of these things and reach out to support. I also wanted to touch on psychological therapy. Um, so when I was reading the BPS document, Understanding Depression, the British Psychological Society, um, it talks about the importance of connection and support and building compassionate and supportive communities. And it reminded me of the side centres um, and what they, what, they, what they offer and what we can learn from them. And the psychological strategies that Swami has given us, um, so things like prayer, that connection with God and ourselves, Meditation, um, which I think has been talked about, so stilling the mind can help with um, getting rid of any negative thoughts and unhelpful thinking styles. Bhajans, again, are a great way to connect with God. Study circles um, enable us to learn from each other, and we're hearing some of these direct words, which can be very powerful and positive. And also service activities, again, connecting with others and building these compassionate and supportive communities. Somebody also says that physical health is a prerequisite for mental health and that mental health ensures physical health. So again, he's noticing that link. And he says that the very joy derived from service reacts on the body and makes you free from disease. The body and the mind are closely interrelated. So again, um, emphasizing how important service is um, in improving how we feel. I'd also like to make reference to um, the animation Living with a Black Dog and encourage you to watch it if it's not something you've watched already. Um, you can find it if you Google it and it's on YouTube. Um, it was created in collaboration with writer and illustrator Matty Johnston um, and the World Health Organization to mark World, World Mental Health Day in 2012. And it's a really good depiction and quite an accurate depiction of um, how it feels to suffer with depression and what you can do to support somebody who is suffering from depression.
So key messages from my presentation today is that depression is an understandable experience. Anyone can be affected. People can and do recover. There are strategies that we can try. However, they may not all work for everybody. And sometimes professional help is needed. Again, I'd like to sort of end with Swami. Um, and I like this quote. He says that courage is the tonic for getting both physical as well as mental health and strength. Give up doubt, hesitation and fear. Do not give any chance for these to strike root in your mind. People by means of the inner divine strength with which they are equipped can achieve anything. So um, if you are depressed, I encourage you to develop courage to speak to others about how you're feeling and ask for help if you are struggling. It is only through struggle that we find our strength. And as Swami says, with the inner strength which we all possess, we can achieve and overcome anything, even depression. And if you know somebody who may be depressed, um, I would encourage you to develop courage to ask them how they're doing, listen to how they're feeling, and signpost them to access further support if this is something that they want. I will share my slides after the presentation, um, but I've put some signposting here for different mental health charities to support people in emotional distress and might be suffering from depression. Um, and I've also shared some NHS approved apps um, as well that might be useful for people. And finally, if anyone has any questions that they don't want to ask in the next part of the presentation, feel free to drop me an email and um, I will try to help with that. Thank you. Sairam, thank you very much, both of you, for a very excellent presentation. We've got lots and lots of questions, but I'll try and see if we can what we can do in the next six or seven minutes. Serena, the first one is for you, and it, it revolves around the talking therapist. It seems very un unusual that talking to a stranger over the phone who happens to be a professional can cure our problems. Uh, can you elucidate that a little bit more? And the other follow-on question from that is, what sort of questions and issues do they discuss over the phone? in CBT or in group therapy and uh, for bereavement counseling and couple therapy? Is it very threatening to go to these things or is it quite comfortable? Um, that's a really good question and there are lots of parts to it. Um, I think the most important thing um, for psychologists working with people is the therapeutic relationships, the relationship you have with, with the person. And um, I would say that is a really good indicator for how successful the work is going to be. So I think the important thing is that you have a good relationship with your therapist. Um, and you'll only know that by going to sessions and seeing if that works for you, that person works for you. Um, so I would encourage if you feel able to sort of have those things in person, um, not all mental health services will offer um, sort of computerized CBT, it might be that they offer face to face. So that's something to look into. Um, yes, it is daunting to speak to a stranger about how you feel. Um, some people find it a bit better because they feel that um, there's less judgment and they feel a little bit safer knowing that person doesn't really know them on a, on a personal level. Um, but as I said, there are online platforms if it's something that you don't feel confident speaking to somebody about face to face as well. So there are lots of different options um, depending on what you feel comfortable for. Thank you very much. Is it safe to say that after the phone call or the face to face consultation, you feel much better than you felt before? I would hope that, but it won't always be the case. As I said, it would depend on, um, you know, how you've connected to the therapist or not. And, you know, those positive feelings might not happen straight away. It might it might, be, it might take time and might be a big piece of work. But um, I would hope that just speaking to somebody about how you feel would, would make you feel better. But I can't guarantee that, no. But I think it's worth a try. Okay. And also, can I ask you, do you have to go to a GP or somebody to access this therapies or can we access it? outside by ourselves yeah you can make self self referrals um if you feel comfortable to do that you can do that otherwise you would go through your gp um to make a referral to your local iap um access improving access to psychological therapy service which is the adult mental health service thank you very much and the next question is for dr kaki covid is a very potent cause of depression can you tell us what sort of symptoms we can get from it and what we can do about them yeah, that's a very good question. And uh, as I alluded, the uh, 
COVID, uh, because of the uh, situation, environmental factors, isolation, uh, lockdown, not meeting people, not being connected, uh, not doing the routine sort of thing, no, nobody to see, that is a fertile ground for any type of depressive symptoms. And exactly like uh, in any other depression, if it is uh, due to COVID or any other condition, uh, you would need to do all the things that uh, Serena put on her slide from getting connected uh, uh, exercises, um, uh, doing things which interest you, uh, picking up a hobby, getting connected to friends, and uh, not uh, relying on drugs or alcohol and all that sort of thing. There isn't a specific treatment for COVID-related uh, depression. It will be exactly the same way you treat uh, any other depression. But uh, the, as I said, COVID has created this nasty environment, which, uh, uh, which is a cause for the depression. Thank you. There's a very interesting question, and I think both of you will probably need to answer this one. Okay. Does depression ever go away? Is there light at the end of the tunnel, even if you're feeling very, very miserable, either with treatment or without treatment? Well, I think, the, as I said, the, a lot of the mild depression uh, lasts for a, a short period of time and goes away. There are others where there is recurrent depression and others where they manifest into more uh, manic depressive psychosis. It is. It goes into a slightly different mode. Sometimes depression, sometimes elation, and fluctuation. And sometimes uh, it is quite resistant to treatment and can last for a very, very long period of time. If it is recurrent, if it lasts for a much longer time and coming at short intervals, then we need to use uh, medication called mood stabilizers, you know, that helps to stabilize the mood from the swing of depression and mania. And uh, I think along with the medication, you would need counseling, you would need long to address what is the underlying problem. All that uh, has been uh, said uh, in the two talks uh, today. So you need to look at, try to find the root cause. And if we try to find the root cause, it will, it will help to ameliorate. But yes, there are uh, occasions where uh, it can be quite prolonged and in a few small percentage of the people, it can last for a very, very long time. Serena, do you want to add anything to that? I would just agree with Dr. Kaki. I think, um, yeah, for some people, depression, it would be more, it, it might always exist, but it's about your management of it and that can be helped and supported. Um, for some people, they can, um, they might suffer from depression, but actually be able to um, recover from it quite quickly. So I think it depends on the person's circumstance. It depends on the type of depression they have um, as well. So, yeah. Thank you very much. There was a very interesting question uh, just that had come through. An elderly person dies in a family and he's got several children. How come one boy gets very depressed about it and the other one takes it in his stride? What is the difference and what are the sort of coping mechanisms that the uh, one can learn from the other one so that he does it, does it better next time around? I think it's something we've spoken about today is that everybody's individual and um, we all have um, different um, coping strategies and abilities. And um, yeah, so obviously one one child maybe was able to to manage um, the bereavement a little bit differently to somebody else. Um, but like I said, not everything will work for everybody. So it's about trying to find what works for um, each individual. And also we talked about kind of supporting other people acceptance as well. So maybe for the person that's um, struggling, just working with them slowly, it might take a little bit of time, um, but that everybody's different and everyone's going to respond to things like bereavement and trauma in a very different way. Are there any tips for the uh, people who are struggling to sort of learn and practice uh, prior to having any problems? I think the things that we've touched upon, like um, preventative measures are things like, you know, physical health, keeping that in check, um, having good sleep hygiene, um, yeah, eating healthily, exercising, 
trying to mindfulness is a great thing as well I think we could do a whole webinar on mindfulness um talking about focusing on um the present moment and not worrying about the past or worrying about the future you can train yourself in those techniques that can be quite useful as well um so I think there are probably things that you can do um that might help beforehand but um Thank yeah you. That's very helpful. Um, I'll finish on the last question. Um, people don't usually like to go and see doctors or anybody else for depression, and they usually leave it until quite late when it gets really quite bad. What do you think the causes are, and how can we tell people, look, it's okay if you've got pains in your tummy, you go and see the doctor immediately. But if you've got, uh, you know, depression, then you wait and wait and wait. Uh, how can we persuade people to say it's not something that is a weakness, and that really they must seek help? Um, how can we persuade people to do that? I'm hoping that today is is the sort of step in the right direction. I think spreading the word and um, trying to raise people's awareness of different mental health difficulties and how to support people um, will encourage people to come forward and speak um, with mental health professionals. So whether it's a GP or you're going to see a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Um, so I think things like today are really important in getting that message across. Yeah, it, if I can just add one more point to that, uh, the Royal College of Psychiatrists launched a program called Defeat Depression for this very reason. And I think there were, uh, uh, if, uh, if one uh, goes into that, this is exactly people who are reluctant and how they can be helped and encouraged and getting to understand and general awareness of uh, what depression actually is will demystify what depression is, you know. Thank you very much. And a very last quick question is, is postnatal depression hereditary? Somebody wants to know. No, there is a very high degree of correlation with a maternal depression and a past history of depressive episodes. If you have got these two, if your mother has a mental health uh, problem with depression, and if you have had one uh, or two episodes of depression in the past, the chances of postnatal depression is much higher. But again, the good news is that uh, uh, it, it responds to uh, medication uh, pretty well, you know, antidepression. And on a very rare occasions I have seen in the past in my um, earlier days, uh, they even needed ECT type of treatment, which, uh, uh, which is very, very helpful. But uh, people with postnatal depression do respond to medication. That is a uh, good point. Thank you both very much. We have overshot our time by about four minutes. So I'll bring the session to a close and um, say thank you to people. I'd like to thank all of you for tuning in and listening and for providing the questions. The session has been very helpful, interesting, and informative. My special thanks to Serena Jones and Dr. Kaki for the excellent presentation. I would also like to thank our IT team and Gayatri Ben for organizing and running the meeting. Above all, my Koti Koti pronouns at the lotus feet of our beloved Lord Baba, without whose grace nothing is possible. Finally, may I mention that our next presentation on Tuesday, the 7th of September, is going to address the subject of healthy aging, adding life to years and years to life by Dr. Bindu. Valus, Valulis Seri. I hope they have pronounced it right. Sign up all of you and thank you very much. <laughs>